Hey guys, I want to do a video this morning on the creation and specifically the person of Adam. Um, you know, as you know, I'm a medical doctor, um, studied the sciences, the biologies, was taught evolution, the Big Bang, really stunning my faith. Um, looking back on it, it hindered my ability to trust the words of the Bible uh, and that it was uh, true. And um, I just want to talk about that a little bit more. You know, there's, there is, uh, first of all, there's a ton of scientific evidence that um, things didn't happen the way that Darwin said and, and that the theory of evolution and the Big Bang are just complete jokes. Um, and I think one day everybody will wake up and see that. And there is, um, you know, just as much or more scientific evidence um, that we can test and repeat, which science is, you know, the, um, basically uh, gathering data, testing hypotheses, and then coming to conclusions. Um, you know, there's, there's more evidence of a young earth, of um, a catastrophic flood that caused the fossil record and geologic columns, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But this really isn't uh, about that. It's about the Bible and that we can trust it. And, you know, not only scientists will come against this uh, who don't believe in Jesus Christ, who don't believe in uh, God or that the words of the Bible are true, but uh, this even creeps into the churches today. And there's many pastors that will try to fit um, these false um, man-made theories into the Bible, again, it doesn't fit. You have to choose one or the other. Um, and if you think that you can accept uh, evolution and, and rename it theistic evolution or that that's the way God did it, uh, then you're not really being honest with yourselves if you um, if you read the, the Genesis account. Now, if you take it as just a just a fable or myth or that that's just the way that man uh, recorded history at the time because they really didn't know and that was the Hebrew mindset you know then then I guess you could um, try to make that fit but again you're not taking um, the Bible as truth you're you're taking it as um, private interpretation and and not the inspired word of God uh, and I hear people say, well, the Bible isn't a science book. Well, science just means knowledge. And so, yeah, the Bible is a science book. It, it's, it's full of knowledge and, and it is uh, spiritual truths and, and wisdom. And uh, it's never been proven incorrect. Uh, whereas man and, and our, our theories and uh, what we, how we view this, this world changes every year. Um, so let's look at it, and I really don't want to go through the Genesis narrative uh, too much, but we, you know, we know that um, God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. And you know that was um, Adam. You know, Adam was uh, formed; he was the first uh, man. And and we read the account of Adam and Eve in in Genesis two, three, and four. Um, and, you know, going into Genesis five, uh, begins, this is the book of the generations of Adam in the day that God created man in the likeness of God made he him. And, you know, man was made in the image of God. It wasn't made in the image of a, uh, ancestor of man and ape. It was made in the image of God. Um, and when the breath of life was breathed, we became a living soul and, um, and we, we had a spirit, we have a spirit because of that. Um, we um, had the knowledge of good and evil since, uh, since the original sin, and we're accountable um, for our actions, and, and there's consequences to those, there's spiritual consequences. Um, you know, the um, story of Adam continues uh, from Genesis 5.1 to Genesis 5.5, 5, and it goes... Uh, on that, you know, Adam lived 130 years and then begat Seth and then lived an additional 800 years and died at 930 years old. Um, these are literal years. There's, um, there's nothing made up about this. These aren't months that, um, you know, they, they just called them months instead of years and Adam was much younger. No, he was, he was the first man, um, 
you know, sin came into the world because of uh, his and Eve's transgression. And he died that day, but it was spiritual. It was a spiritual death. But physically, he lived 930 years, as it says in Genesis 5. And these are literal years. There wasn't uh, a lot of mutations within the DNA of humans. Um, you know, genetic entropy had not taken effect as we see today. The environment, I'm sure, was different. Um, you know, we, can't, we can only speculate what it was like then, but I'm sure it was different in the pre-flood uh, time period. And people lived a long time. Uh, simple as that. But we can um, continue in the rest of the time we have. I want to look at um, other verses in the Bible that speak of Adam. And we can go to First Chronicles 1. And this is the uh, chronicles that um, go through the time of Abraham. But it starts in Chronicles 1.1. Adam, Seth, Enos, and then continues um, through Noah and his sons and then uh, their sons all the way uh, through uh, Abraham. And so again, we see Adam in the genealogy in the Old Testament. Uh, we can go to Job 31, 33, 31, 33. It says, if I covered my transgressions as Adam by hiding mine iniquity in my bosom, uh, did I fear a great multitude? And this is, and it continues, but this is Job. Uh, speaking to his friends after uh, he lost all that he had, and you know he was he was talking a little bit about uh, that that he didn't turn away strangers and that he was righteous um, and didn't uh, sin in the uh, similitude of of Adam, uh, and then covered his sins um, as Adam and Eve did. But uh, again, Job took Adam as a literal person. We look in the New Testament, uh, a lot of references in the New Testament. Luke 3.38 um, says, which was the son of Enos, which was the son of Seth, which was the son of Adam, which was the son of God. And this is going backwards from Joseph, who was the stepfather of Jesus, and tracing his lineage all the way back to Adam. Um, you know, there's dozens of men's name in this uh, genealogy. And these are real people. There's no reason why, just as in First Chronicles, there's no reason that uh, these people are real. You know, we if we think that Joseph was real, uh, Jesus' stepfather. Uh, well, he had a father, and and that person had a father all the way back to to Adam. Um, and there isn't any reason to say, well, these were real people, but then at a certain point. It becomes fiction. Uh, that doesn't even make sense. Um, you know, in the New Testament, speaking about the creation, uh, Jesus, you know, God himself, God in the flesh in Mark 10, 6 says, but from the beginning of the creation, God made them male and female. And, um, you know, he was there. He, he was the creator. And um, this lines up, you know, beautifully with, with Genesis account. You see in uh, Matthew 19, 4, this is Jesus speaking again about the creation. And he answered, and he's speaking to the Pharisees, uh, and said unto them, Have ye not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? So, you know, at the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. Um, you know, there had to be um, a male and female to reproduce, to replenish the earth. And... Um, you know, you can't um, uh, look at evolution and and make that fit. It just doesn't fit. Um, Romans 5.12, and really the whole book of Romans, or whole chapter of Romans 5, um, if we take as truth, again, blows evolution out of the water um, that we uh, descended um, from apes, and there's this prehistoric time full of death and mutations, and that that was the pathway that God made man. Uh, but it says in Romans 5.12, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Uh, it goes on to verse 15, But not as the offense, so also as the free gift. For if through the offense of one many be dead, much more the grace of God, and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto many. So, you know, it 
Paul is saying right here um, through the inspi inspiration of God that um, before before man sinned, there was no death. And, you know, we're talking about uh, flesh and blood dying. Um, and, um, you know, we can continue this in 1 Corinthians 15. This is the resurrection chapter. And, you know, Paul is uh, really sharing a lot of uh, spiritual insight about the resurrected body that we'll have one day as believers in Jesus Christ. But it says in verse 22, For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. And, you know, he basically is is comparing uh, Adam being the first man, an earthy man, uh, born of the dust of the ground with the breath of life breathed into him by God, and the spiritual man, which is Jesus Christ, who is God, who is from everlasting, um, with God manifest in the flesh to um, become the person of Jesus Christ, to uh, give us the pathway to eternal life through him. Uh, it goes on in 1 Corinthians 15, 45, and so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul, and the last Adam was made a quickening spirit. So again, um, using Adam, a real person who was made a living soul, uh, with the last Adam being um, you know, a reference to Jesus Christ, that he's the quickening spirit, that the Holy Spirit that indwells believers will will quicken us one day at his return. Um, and also key to point out is it, it says, and so it is written, and Jesus says that many times. We just saw that in Matthew 19, 4, you know, have ye not read? Um, you know, Jesus is always questioning the Pharisees, have they not read and trusted the scripture? Um, you know, and right here it says and so it is written you know that that's a statement that testifies to the truth of the old testament um of the story of genesis and that we can trust it is truth you know uh paul in first timothy uh uses uh adam and eve as literal people to talk about the uh, spiritual authority uh, of, of gender and then in jude 1 14 um, it says in Enoch also the seventh from Adam prophesied of these saying behold the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints and so uh, Enoch was the seventh um, descendant from Adam a real person Enoch was a real person Adam was a real person um, Jude uh, knew this and through the inspiration of God um, you know he he wrote this in in scripture and you know also of note um, it shows that Enoch was um, preaching back before the flood of the second coming of Jesus Christ, as, as you can see here. So the gospel's been throughout um, all time since since the creation. The holy prophets have spoken and written uh, the word of God for for all to to see. Um, you know, so as we can see, this really, um, you know, with Adam being in the genealogies with uh, Jesus referring to the creation, male and female, um, you know, and Paul in Romans and 1 Corinthians, uh, giving us really a lot of spiritual truths about the resurrection, uh, about how um, spiritual rebirth comes about through Jesus Christ. A lot of these spiritual truths um, are read over or are not understood if you're not taking the Genesis, Genesis account uh, literally. And, you know, again, um, we just need to trust the Bible and not trust man. Uh, what we think we know now, a couple of decades from now will change and there will be a different time period. It, it won't be 18 billion years that the earth began, but 21 or 22 and you know, it's, it's all nonsense, and and it's science fiction. It's not science. There's no knowledge in that. That's pure speculation. Uh, but we can always trust the Bible, and I just want to make sure that the Bible um, begins to shape somebody's worldview instead of their worldview shaping how they read the Bible. Um, we take the Bible as truth and put our trust in it first, and then go from there when it comes to how we view this world. Thanks.